Hey, what's up? Welcome back. We are building out a creator platform where creators can sell products. And in this episode, you're going to learn all about handling file uploads. We're going to talk about uploading an image, a product photo for our products. So right now we are creating these products. We can add a new product. And what we want to do is add a new button here that will allow us to upload an image of that product. So we're going to start from scratch here. We're going to say Rails uh, active storage colon install. Now in order for this to work, uh, I, I've also installed the VIPS um, package or the VIPS homebrew thing. So VIPS, uh, so you can say brew install VIPS if you're on Mac uh, if, or if you use homebrew. If you have some other system, you might need some sort of image processing binary that works with the image processing gem. So I'm going to say bundle add image processing. That's going to add the image processing gem to our bundle. We're going to use that for doing things like resizing and cleaning up the images as they come in. All right, so we've got active storage installed. And what that did, or what that did was it created a migration for us. So we can say Rails DB migrate uh, colon status, and that'll tell us uh, whether or not we've run it, because I can't actually remember. So it says, uh, no, it's down. We haven't actually run it. So we can say Rails DB colon migrate. That will run the migration, and that will uh, create a couple different tables, active storage blobs, attachments, and variant records. Those are going to be used in a polymorphic way. So if we go to our product model, we can actually just say down here, uh, has one attached uh, photo. And that's really all we need to do. We don't actually have to change the product model or the product table at all. And it's going to use active storage in a polymorphic way. All right, so the next thing we want to do is, um, so as we're working our way up the stack, one of the approaches I like to take when building a feature, sort of start at the database, work your way through having like the model set up, then go to the controller, make sure the controller's all set up, then go to the view. So let's do that today. And we'll jump into the products controller and add photo to our allowed product params because those are going to be passed in when we create our new product. Recall that we're after we create a product and save it in the database, we're going to send that over to Stripe. And at this point, um, when we first create the images, we're going to be storing them locally. So by default, we're going to use the local disk for storage. And so our files are not going to be publicly accessible. So we won't actually be able to send them to Stripe just yet. But in the next episode, we'll get around to that. OK, so now we've got our model. We've got our controller. Let's move our way to the view. So we're going to open up the product new view. And recall that we were using Tailwind UI, the forms layout for Tailwind UI. We were using this sort of stacked layout. So let's find our stacked layout. And there was an image or a photo upload sort of a UI that we could just copy here. So let's drop that in right below the description. So we're going to say we now have this new thing that we want. Whoops. All right. And this is going to be the product photo. Cool. Let's go take a look at what this looks like. So if we jump over to our page, we've got this photo label. It has an image. It kind of looks like an avatar. That's not what our product is ultimately going to look like. So let's actually just remove that entire sort of uh, SVG span. And then let's also remove this flex item center situation. And the button, rather than having any of that margin on the left, we don't actually need any of that. Now, instead of being a button, we also want to change this to a file type. So we're going to change the input to type file. And that is sort of like a standalone um, thing that we can do. All right, so now we have this file input where we can select a file. That's great. But it, uh, what we want to do in what active record or active storage allows us to do is take an image and upload it client side to wherever it's going to ultimately be. So um, there are some JavaScript utilities that we're going to use. So let's now jump into application JS. And we're going to say import at Rails active storage. And that's going to uh, set up the active storage, like import the active storage package. Then we want to say active storage .start, and that will fire up all the JavaScript that we need. Now, going back to our form here, by default, this file doesn't have any names. We need to give it a name, and that's going to be product photo. That way, the controller will know what the key is for this when we're saving it on the product. We also want to add a data attribute here that will allow us to upload client side. So we're going to say data direct upload URL is equal to this thing that Rails gives us uh, called Rails direct uploads URL. OK, so I think that is looking pretty good. Let's take a look here and see if this is actually going to work. So we're going to do test, test. 
We'll pick um, a thing here. We've got like a little product image, give it some numbers, click create product, active support message verifier invalid signature. I think we need to restart the server because we installed some gems and did some new stuff here. So let's restart that and then refresh. Um, we'll, we'll go through the, the flow once more. So we're gonna come back over here, refresh, test, test, pick a file, enter in some amount, click create product. Hmm. Active support message verifier invalid signature. So I'm not actually sure what's going on here. So I'm gonna go back over here, dashboard. I'm gonna keep open the terminal down here just to see if there's any errors. Active storage is, okay, so here we go, here we go. Active storage is not defined. So we started using this active storage JavaScript library, but we didn't actually install it. So inside of application JS, we are using import active storage here, but we didn't actually install that. So I'm gonna say npm install active, Rails active storage. That will add the package. Now we can say bin dev again, come back over to the client side. Um, okay, so now that we have that installed, we should be able to say test, test, uh, choose a file, pick the file, one, two, three, boom, create the product. Is this still failing? Do we still have an error? Hmm. Oh, okay, we need to say import star as active storage from, okay. Now our JavaScript error is gone. We can say test, test. We can pick our file. Let's see if this works. One, two, three, four, create product. All right, we were redirected to the product page. So now if we open up Rails console, we should be able to look at product.last and we can see that product.last.photo should have an active storage attachment, and it does. So one thing that's really cool is on our product show page, so if we go to the product show page, here right above our checkout button, we could say, uh, let's create an image tag with at product.photo, and that should create an image tag for us here. All right, so it's got our Im our image that we uploaded, Build and Learn, this is our podcast, buildandlearn.dev. Head over and check it out if you haven't already. It's uh, my friend Colin and I hang out and just visit about uh, tech and building our lives, and it's, it's quite fun. All right, so we've got um, the image is uploading. We can show it here, but one of the things that we might wanna do is sort of limit or have different a couple different options for the sizes, and the way that those are defined is as variants on the product model. So down here, when we say has one attached photo, we can say uh, do photo. Now we can say photo.variant, give it a name like thumb, and then we can specify a bunch of different arguments that will apply to the photo for that specific variant. So we can say something here like resize to limit and then pass that an array. So for a thumbnail, it might be like 100 by 100. And for a medium image, it might be resize to 400, 400. These are the two that I think we're gonna need for now. And what we can do is use these inside of our view by saying dot representation thumb. And if we refresh now, that will give us the thumb representation. If we want the medium representation, we can say medium. So now we should have two images here. One is the thumb, one is the medium representation. And so those are kind of like different sizes. And what happens is when your browser requests the image, it is redirected through a proxy that will lazily actually apply that transition and then also cache it. So you can do some really fancy things there. Um, so that was that's kind of like start to finish all the things that you might need to upload an image and this is just working with it locally. So in the next episode, we're gonna go through setting up AWS S3 in order to work with our Ruby on Rails application so that we can upload these images to S3 so that they're publicly available and then we can use those as part of our Stripe products when we redirect to checkout. So thanks so much for watching. This was a really great introduction to active storage. Uh, really appreciate your time and attention and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.